Dubrovnik, Ragusa, the Pearl of the Adriatic Sea, whatever you want to call it, that is the city right behind me. One of the most beautiful cities in the world. Thousands of tourists come here to just get a glimpse of this view right behind me. And it remains one of the hottest tourist destinations in 2024. It truly is one of the marvels of the Adriatic Sea. And I only have 24 hours here to show you everything that this incredible city has to offer, but we're gonna do it in this video. You can see from here the city isn't the largest, but there's so much to do, there's so much to explore, and there's so much to immerse yourself in when you're here in this city. Welcome to the Pearl of the Adriatic Sea, and welcome to the city of Dubrovnik. Good morning, bright and early here from one of the most beautiful cities in the world, the Pearl of the Adriatic and formerly known as the city-state of Ragusa. This right here is the city of Dubrovnik right behind me and today I'm going to give you the complete guide to Dubrovnik in one day, mainly visiting the old town and some of the forts around it. Dubrovnik, to be honest, is not a very big city. If you look from the drone shots, you'll see it's just that tiny little old town and that's Dubrovnik. Everything else that's been built around it has been built sort of in the most recent centuries and the most recent decades for hotels and accommodations. But the heart of Dubrovnik, the core of Dubrovnik is all right there within that walled city. And that's it. <laughs> that is Dubrovnik. And I think you can tell it really isn't that big. The cute little narrow alleyways and the beautiful churches and structures inside that wall makes it one of the most visited places in all of Europe and definitely in all of Croatia. But with that, we're currently right here at King's Landing. Um, if you've watched Game of Thrones, you'll know that this is where King's Landing is located. It's got this one tiny little pier out and there's some rocks out in the distance. It is a very, very beautiful place and I'm gonna be using this as a reference point for a lot of the things we're gonna see today. But with that, let's go ahead and head into the Old Town and let me show you why Dubrovnik is one of the most beautiful places you're ever gonna see in the world. There are multiple ways that you can enter the actual old city, multiple different entry points, but the most important gate is the one right behind me. This is Pile Gate, and most likely, if you're joining a tour or anything, it'll probably start out here and take you inside. Now, this gate is very, very old. It's built with these old walls, which you can see. I mean, just look at how thick the wall is. That's the start of the wall. That's the end of the wall. And that is not the length of the wall, but the thickness of the wall. That's how protected Dubrovnik needed to be from any invaders that came to try and attack this city. But Pile Gate is one of the main entryways of three here in the Dubrovnik Old Town. And once you enter it, you've officially entered into the Old Town of Dubrovnik. <laughs> Now, once you enter the old town, one of the first things you've got to do is to climb up here to the city walls. And the reason for that is because the city walls take about two to three hours to complete the entire round around the city. And the worst part is there's no getting off. Once you get on here, you're committed for the whole journey. There's no going down, getting a drink, then coming back up. Once you're up here, you're up here for good and you're not getting down, which is why it's a very long commitment and you want to do it when the sun isn't too bright yet, which is why we're doing it in the morning, early in the morning, as early as possible so that we avoid the afternoon sun because there's no shelter here. You can see right around me, there are no shade, there's no where that you can sort of hide from the sun. Once you're up here, it's a two, three hour long commitment of no water, no drinks, and pure sun for the entire way. Now, the view of the entire town is incredible. You can't deny that, but you can just see earlier when we were here, there was nobody. And now the crowds have taken over Dubrovnik. It really pays to wake up early in the morning and come to see the city because otherwise you're just sharing it with thousands and thousands of people. Now, when we started this video, we started it right over there near this King's Landing place in Game of Thrones. Actually, the original name of this place is actually the West Harbor. And 
a long time ago when Dubrovnik was one of the most important trading cities in the Adriatic, this harbor was used for many ships. Boats would come in here, they would park, they would tow up and they would rest and then you would have a little village here where they could come, get some rest, get some food, stock up on any sort of supplies they needed before heading out back into the Adriatic Sea. But today, as you can see, no boats are here anymore. The new harbor is on the other side of Dubrovnik, all the way on that side. But today, ships don't park in here anymore, boats aren't parking in here anymore. You can do a bit of sea kayak, and I think there are some kayaks there. But for the most part, nowadays, it's just a nice touristy place to check out. And I mean, look at those crowds right there. That is why it's so worth it to wake up early in the morning, because you will not get any photos there nowadays, um, especially during this time of the day with all those crowds out there. Now with how many tourists visit Dubrovnik, it's very easy to forget that this is still a living city, as in people still live here and it's still the home for thousands of people here in this city. And you really see that when you're climbing the walls and you're seeing people living, they're getting their clothes dried, they're drying their bed sheets and everything. I mean, people live here as an ordinary life, like a normal life, but it has just become such a big tourist phenomenon that it just we sometimes really forget about the people who actually live here but people have their gardens, their patios, their backyards and they're just living their normal life here in Dubrovnik. Now if you watched our previous Dubrovnik video you'll know that we spent some time at Lokrum Island, a sort of escape away from the hustle and bustle of Dubrovnik. Well, that's Lokrum Island right there, you can see. It actually looks much smaller from here, from Dubrovnik, but once you actually get there, you realize it's quite a lot of walking to get around. So don't let the looks from Dubrovnik fool you. Lokrum Island is much bigger than you would actually expect. So, I may have lied when I said there was no water, no drinks, no nothing. Once you got on the wall, it's true you can't get off the wall at this point, but they bring the drinks to you. They have bars like these, which are perfect for anyone who wants to take a little bit of break from the sun and go in the shade. They've got some nice fruit juices, they've got orange juice. I've got their multivitamin signature juice, which tastes amazing actually. It's got a little bunch of different fruits in it. But these are the sort of things that you can get while you're walking around the wall. And they have a couple of stands of the same bar throughout the wall itself. So you're not completely stranded, but also you still can't get off the wall because once you're up here, you're stuck for good. Unfortunately, all good things have to come to an end. And since the juice is finished, we gotta keep going on the wall. Now, earlier when we started getting up on this wall, we saw the West Harbor, which is where King's Landing is for Game of Thrones. But we're at the halfway point in the wall walk, and now we're at the main harbor, the East Harbor. And unlike the West Harbor, this is still being used today. This is actually where you go for your boat tours to Lokrum Island, to the islands all around Dubrovnik. You come here to get either the public boats or the private boats as well. It's a bustling port that's like right here on the eastern part of the Dubrovnik town. And you can see so many tour groups here are ready to get onto their boats. They're gonna take them to all the different islands around Dubrovnik. But honestly, it's just incredible to me how blue that water is. You can see it's crystal clear, it's turquoise, it's that perfect Adriatic color that you're looking for. And it makes you really just want to jump into the water because it's so hot right now. And another hour walking along the wall and we've made it to the highest point in the entire wall and you can actually see right behind me there is a moat that separates the actual old wall from the main areas outside of Dubrovnik, old town and that's because in the olden days of course they needed the old moat to protect Dubrovnik. Now today the moat has turned into a new road that they've built where the public buses go through but back in the day that's how you would best protect the city of Dubrovnik with a moat and an insanely long and thick fort that would protect against all invaders. But with that, the end of the fort is actually really close by near the very tallest point of the entire walk. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna finally get off this wall. And just like that, we have made it back into the hustle and bustle of Dubrovnik with the millions of tour groups that like to come through here. I have to say, there should be a few corrections. First, it is not a two to three hour commitment in that you can get on and you can get off at certain points and get on again. So there are points within the wall where you can get off and get on. So it's not like you have to go the entire round in one go. 
And the second thing is that actually I don't think it even takes three hours. I did it a little under two hours and I stopped <laughs> to have a drink. I took lots of photos and lots of videos and it took me less than two hours. So I know for some people they might need more time because it's a little hard getting up and down the steps. But if you're in relatively good shape and you can, you know, you're pretty young and agile and can go up the stairs pretty quickly, you wouldn't need more than two hours to get through that. But with that said, we're back down in the city of Dubrovnik. Let's go see what more it has to offer. So many tours. One thing that I really like about Dubrovnik is that it's very easy to find something that you need, whether it's like an ATM or a certain restaurant that you're looking for. They have these street lamps in the sort of in the alleyways and on each street lamp what they've done is they've painted it and designed it in a way to show what that place is. So if it's an ATM it'll say ATM, if it's a clinic it'll say doctor. So there's a lot of identifying sort of features on these lamps that tell you what is the store or what is the owner of the store dedicated to. This makes it really easy to navigate around Dubrovnik and it's a very innovative and artistic way to sort of map out all the different venues in the city. Welcome to the market located within the walls of Dubrovnik City. This little market is home to some incredible stalls selling all the local produce and local goods that you can find around here. There's a lot of lavender that's being sold. I think that is a very common theme that you'll find here in the Adriatic, but there's also olive oil, there's olive oil soap, there's a lot of fruits that are grown in the farms just around Dubrovnik, and they bring it here in to sell to the tourists. Now traditionally this was like actually where people in Dubrovnik would buy their food and groceries from. Obviously nowadays we've got so many supermarkets and it's super convenient to just go out and buy things now, and they've made some more artisan sort of sea salt salt soups for example. But nonetheless they've turned this market into a newer tourister market for those who come in and want to buy something. Of course they still sell vegetables, they still sell fruit, so it's not like all of the tradition is gone, but it's no longer the same market that it was maybe 400 years ago. Now I'm climbing up a series of stairs here in Dubrovnik, and for some these might just be any set of stairs, but for those of you who have watched Game of Thrones, these are probably really important stairs because these are the stairs of shame or the steps of shame where they had the walk of shame. To be fair, I don't really know. I've never watched Game of Thrones, but if you're a Game of Thrones fan, you'll probably recognize this staircase and know how important it is. Now, the actual name of these steps that were in Game of Thrones is actually the Jesuit steps. And the reason why they call the Jesuit steps is because this church right here is the church of St. Ignatius of Loyola, who was the founder of the Society of Jesus. So it is a Jesuit church built by the Society of Jesus. It was completed in 1725 and inside it's beautiful. It's got these beautiful artworks and remember Dubrovnik was very much influenced by Italy and Italian culture and the dome actually inside is constructed by the Sicilian artist from Italy. So there's a lot of Italian influences in the churches and the structures here and the architecture and this church right behind me is one of those perfect demonstrations of Italian culture here in Dubrovnik. Now the church of St. Ignatius was a church by the Society of Jesus but it's not the main church here in Dubrovnik. The main church is actually the one right behind me, the Cathedral of Dubrovnik. It's a Roman Catholic cathedral. And to be honest, it's white on the inside and it's pretty simple. But again, what sets it out apart is that Italian influence. There's a triptych at the very back of the church from Titian. And if you don't know, Titian was one of the greatest Italian painters of the Renaissance. And they have one of his artworks in here. In fact, there was a lot of artists who contributed to the overall structure and planning of the Cathedral of Dubrovnik. And today it remains the largest Catholic cathedral in the old city. But the Italian influences can be seen everywhere here in the city, this Italian Dalmatian mix of cultures. And Dubrovnik is that perfect melting pot for all these Adriatic cultures to meet together. As you're walking through Dubrovnik, you'll realize that there are a lot of buildings that are not really in picture-perfect condition. 
Like the one behind me, you can see it's sort of dark and sort of blackened on the side. Dubrovnik City has been th through a lot. They've been through earthquakes, they've been through fires, and that building specifically had gone through a really, really massive fire. A lot of the buildings were also destroyed during the war in the 90s, and therefore this city has gone through a lot of history to get to where it is today. You might see these polished streets and think, oh, you know, Dubrovnik has had been really well and it's been preserved very well, and that is true to a certain extent, but a lot of it has also been damaged and the work that they've done to repair it and make it what it is today is really impressive. Now we've come outside of the old town of Dubrovnik, which you can see right behind me to sort of come back to where we started the day off at. Now we actually started off the day a little bit lower than where I am right now, but right now I'm at the top of Fortress Lovrijenac. I think that's how you pronounce it. This fort was actually used in Game of Thrones for filming, but historically it's played a very important role because in the 1500s and in the 1600s, Dubrovnik was one of the greatest states in the Adriatic Sea. They had a great, powerful navy, they were a great trading country, they were their own country of Ragusa, until they had to compete with the Venetians. So the Venetians were constantly who they were fighting against. And this fort was actually built as a sort of triumph against the Venetians. The Venetians wanted to come and build a fort here, but people in Dubrovnik got to it first, which is why we have this fort here today. What's interesting about this fort is that it's in a triangular shape. Usually when you think of a fort, you think of a square shape, you know, to protect on all, all corners. But here at Fort Lovely Janak, they built it in a triangular shape. I think it more has to do with the geography, the fact that the stones on which it's built were originally like in that state, so they had no choice but to build it that way but it gives you an incredible view of Dubrovnik City and more importantly, where we started off today, that West Harbor, the King's Landing uh, in Game of Thrones right here. But the water is just so incredibly blue. Honestly, there isn't much in the fort anymore. Most of the stuff has been taken out. They have a few cannons laying around that are aimed off at, I don't know, some imaginary Venetian ships out there. But for the most part, the fortress is pretty much empty but it's cool to look around and it's also included within the ticket when you go for the city walls of Dubrovnik. Right there, you can see all those people hiking up in the afternoon sun. I really would not want to be them right now. Now, if you've seen photos of the Dubrovnik skyline, you've probably seen this one very specific tower that looks a little something like this and this and this. Well, that is actually the Franciscan monastery and church complex here in Dubrovnik. It was a place where monks would train of the Franciscan order. And as you can see, that's the tower right behind me. Now here we are in the cloisters of the monastery and it is beautiful. Um, they preserved it really well. This structure was actually really important, not just for the religious purposes as well, but because medicinally they used to have a pharmacy in here that was very, very important. It was a very sort of advanced pharmacy at the time. People who were studying medicine came here and they actually have a poster of all the people who have come and visited in recent years for the pharmacy here. Currently they actually have a current working pharmacy within the complex funnily enough but they have an old apothecary is what they call it um, in the complex itself that used to serve as the sort of medicine center here in the city of Dubrovnik. Now of course times have changed and that apothecary is now just a museum where you can see the ingredients and spices that they used to treat people considering that Dubrovnik was very heavily well connected in the world they could get access to those medicines and spices quite easily but it's interesting how they've managed to preserve it all today and you know the the fact is that this monastery has been destroyed multiple times. There have been fires and earthquakes and invasions and actually one of the missiles during the 91 war actually uh, hit one of the buildings here. But they've managed to restore it, they've managed to preserve it, and that's why you see that beautiful, beautiful tower that's one of the symbols of Dubrovnik here at this monastery. I feel like one of the best things to do in Dubrovnik isn't actually to visit all the churches and the buildings and the museums. It's simply to roam around and find little streets like these where you have it all to yourself and you're seeing how the old ancient Ragusans used to live in these old buildings. I mean, to be honest, they're all mostly Airbnbs and villa apartments now, but just to imagine you're walking around here 400 years ago, nobody around except for locals who are living here. 
That's probably the best part of Dubrov Dubrovnik. That's the whole charm of this city. It's about the simple little streets like these where you don't have anyone else but yourself. Now today here in Dubrovnik, we've seen quite a few churches. So we think we've seen the main sort of uh, Franciscan church, we've seen a Catholic church. And you might be wondering, are there any other religions that are represented in Dubrovnik? And the interesting answer is yes, but it may not be as you think it is. When you look right behind me, that is a very interesting door. There's a green door right there, it's got a little plaque there. That plaque symbolizes the start of a mosque inside. And actually, it's the only mosque in all of Dubrovnik. It's a very tiny mosque, it's a very small mosque, and yet it exists. And you might wonder, why is there a mosque in the middle of Dubrovnik? In the 1800s, when the Austro-Hungarian Empire took over Dubrovnik, they felt that it wasn't right for Dubrovnik to remain its own city-state, its own province. So what they did is they actually merged Dubrovnik with Bosnia and Herzegovina and all those places we visited previously in our previous videos. What that meant was that there was a free movement of people between Bosnia and Dubrovnik and many of them came here doing sort of crafts and trade and just trying to start their own lives here in Dubrovnik. But they needed a place of worship so they built the tiniest mosque possible just to get them somewhere to worship but then all the other churches around would stay there. Now it's interesting that today that mosque still exists but it is a very tiny mosque and I would go in but I'm totally not dressed for the occasion. There's no way I'm able to go in right now. But it is very, very interesting of the history of why there is a mosque here in Dubrovnik and the fact that the reason why it exists is because Dubrovnik was sort of handed off to another empire who decided to govern completely differently, bringing in a whole group of people that Dubrovnik previously didn't have exposure to. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. Now, as I was climbing the walls of Dubrovnik this morning, which you can see right up there, I realized there was a place where you could go cliff jumping right there. And it turns out it actually exists. And I think this calls for a time for us to get into the water. So let's change to the action camera and let's get in. <laughs> many fish in the water um, and the ocean is just beautiful the Adriatic Sea these are one of those places that you're never gonna forget here in Dubrovnik but wow this is one of those spots that are just sort of not people not many people know about it but when you're on the wall you'll actually see it and it becomes really really obvious and to be honest it is completely beautiful Well, as you can probably tell, the sun has set right behind the walls of Dubrovnik. And this place, this is one of the most incredible places you can come to. Cliff diving, usually there's a bar open. I don't know why it's not open today, but usually you'll get a bar here. But what an incredible way to end off our day here in Dubrovnik. Now, just a couple things to note. First, what I did today is not everything that Dubrovnik has to offer. If anything, Dubrovnik actually offers a lot more things. Rector's Palace is something that's super popular. I didn't get to go to because it was closed today. So there's a lot more to actually do in Dubrovnik, but this is what I was able to do in one day, and you can probably see it is quite a lot. So you probably could be able to do Dubrovnik in two, maybe even three days if you're taking it slow. The next thing that you should probably note is that the Dubrovnik Pass is going to help you out a lot. It covers a lot of things like getting on a bus, it covers a lot of the museums, the city walls, the fort. It covers all those things for a price of 35 euros, you get the full package, which is really, really worth it considering each bus trip alone it already costs 2 euros. So it's, it's a pretty nice package to have. And the final thing about Dubrovnik is that you gotta enjoy it. It is one of the most incredible places I've ever been to, the Pearl of the Adriatic Sea. And the history of this place is so incredible. It's become a melting pot of all different cultures that have come and gone over this massive city above me. It may be a small city, it might not be the biggest city out there, and actually it's one of the smaller cities in Croatia. There are much bigger cities in Croatia, but it is still an incredible city to visit. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here, a full guide to a day here in Dubrovnik. It is an incredible sunset, it's an incredible way to end off the night, but if you have enjoyed this video, please definitely give it a like and subscribe for more food and travel videos. We've got a lot more coming from here in Croatia, so make sure to stay tuned, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.